going around the globe for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's View. Hello and welcome to God's View. We're so glad you joined us today. Woo! Glory today and fire today. Don't change that channel because God has something for you. And remember, when we're going through the show, call the prayer lines. Don't go through things alone. There is such power and agreement and God is doing miraculous things on the prayer line. So 307-637-PRAY, that's 7729. He's no respecter of persons. And you are anonymous. We will never solicit you. We don't ask you for any addresses, any names, anything. And God just don't want you to go through things alone. He really wants to touch people's lives. But they have been so concerned because of privacy. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's just not pride. Sometimes it's because somebody came in and hurt you on a prayer line or a friend. by You, you told them something and they took your information and put your heart out on a chopping block and just mutilated mm -hmm. it and then you don't trust and so you don't want to call but you can trust this prayer line you can call this prayer line and that's not going to happen to you because we won't yes. know who you are <laughs> okay so we love you thank you for joining us today if you were just clicking through that channel remember don't leave it was no accident that god had you find us right now please join us around this table get your favorite drink because there is some fire going through these cameras today okay right. charlene okay. back to mirror your god's view host stephanie besh priscilla pruitt i was going to call you besh too and <laughs> stacy white Woo and we are on fire for god today and i'll tell you what we're going to be talking about the spirit of jezebel and um you know uh one thing that you gotta know uh, just take conviction if there's something said. Uh, let God really come in and minister to you. Because when mm -hmm. you talk about the spirit of Jezebel, if you're getting offended, then know that you have something that you need to deal with. Right. And that's just how it is, you know. So uh, we're going to let Priscilla start. Oh, and thank uh, you. yeah, well, because it was your subject, I yes. didn't get the spirit of Jezebel. To her. No, no. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Well, and so, anyways, but take your time because we have a lot of time. We you. have two shows. This is show one and two. And if mm -hmm. we get everything in one, we won't do two, okay. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, we've been dealing with a spirit of Jezebel. So that's why I was like, you know, people need to hear this. People don't understand. Exactly. I think that word is used very freely yeah. and it's not very accurate to what the spirit actually is and how it manipulates and how it controls it, what it does. So I thought that we could shed some light yes. and kind of tell the story of Jezebel, because if you actually read the Old Testament and look up the actual person in the Bible, you see the character of the spirit of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. So when we read about Jezebel in the Old Testament, we find out that she was the wife of King Ahab, who was actually the seventh king of Israel. So Jezebel was devoted to her pagan god, Baal. And therefore she caused the king of Israel, God's anointed people and the people of Israel to turn away from God and to worship Baal. And Jezebel murdered, she manipulated, she used sex and control to get whatever she wanted. And Baal was often worshiped by child sacrifice, sacrificing babies, which we see that right now. We see that in our culture to this day, abortion is no different. And it, um, and it was extremely explicit, explicit uh, sexual r rituals that they would do. And that is exactly what Jezebel caused the Israeli people, God's people to start sacrificing children and babies, start doing these explicit sexual rituals in, in God's house. Like it wasn't just, ever, it was even in God's house. And Ahab allowed the construction of temples to Baal in God's chosen people in their land. And so one of Ahab's henchmen, King Ahab's henchmen, even rebuilt the city of Jericho, sacrificing his own sons with the king's approval. Mm -hmm. So this just became dark, like fast, like you saw the change quick. And that's one of the things you'll see in, with, when the spirit of Jezebel comes, that the change will be rapid, quick change. And so under Jezebel's influence, the priests of Baal were encouraged and the priests and altars to God were destroyed. And that's when Elijah worked the miracle. That's when he came and you hear about the fire coming down from heaven and that that fire from God slaughtered the 450 false priests of Baal. So here comes Elijah and he has this amazing display and Jezebel was angered. 
she fiercely persecuted and came against and even threatened the Lord's prophet Elijah. And as a result, Elijah flees. And after this huge victory on Mount Carmel, slaughtering all the you know, false priests of Baal, he fled. And after just one day's journey, and one day's journey back then was nothing because these people would travel for days. After one day's journey, Elijah stops and he rests and he literally asked the Lord that he would die. So he became suicidal. And that's something you'll also see is another side of the spirit of Jezebel. It'll bring that spirit of suicide. And so the story, this whole story is so pivotal in understanding what the Jezebel spirit does and the fruit of it. So what is a Jezebel spirit? It's a spirit that likes to attack the prophetic mm -hmm. and the supernatural ministry of God, just like she did with Elijah. It likes to attack your identity. We see how she did that to the Israelites. She attacked them and persecuted them. I mean, not persecuted. She attacked them and persuaded them to worship the false God because they were God's chosen people. And so she attacked that identity. It was like, let's see if you're really God's chosen people. And she, it, it wants you to live insecure and defeated in order to derail you from what God says and who God says you truly are. And again, we see that all throughout this story. It wants you, it wants to get to your legacy. It wants to get to your children. That is and the truth. It's That's so the true. Truth. That's what the Jezebel spirit does. It wants to get to your legacy. This is one of the reasons that they sacrifice babies <coughs> to Baal, is it wants to take away that legacy. It wants to destroy God's design for your destiny and for your relationships by attacking marriages. It attacks marriages. It comes, it comes against the family design. It comes against the husband and makes them passive or enabling. And you see that. What did Jezebel do to her husband, King Ahab? Back then, women didn't have the authority to tell the kingdom what to do. I mean, if you read the story of Esther, it was nothing like that. But she did. She made him passive and enabling. And you mm -hmm. see that throughout their whole relationship. In a time when women didn't have authority, she demanded authority. And we see how he became that way, just very passive. It loves to work with lead, weak leadership. It looks for passivity in leadership. And you see this all throughout the story. And you'll see that when a Jezebel spirit comes in, it looks for the weak leadership and it takes, it attaches like and a parasite. Who's in sin leadership. Uh huh. That's in sin or that sin too. It time. could. It could find somebody uh -huh. who's in sin. Yeah. And Jezebel <coughs> forged the king's, this is one of the things she did because of weak leadership. She forged the king's signature and she sent letters to the townspeople falsely accusing Naboth of blaspheming God. And when Naboth was publicly confronted, Jezebel urged the crowd, take him out, stone him to death. And so he was killed. And then she takes his property and reverts it to the royal, um, royal kingdom which is exactly what they wanted, but they didn't have right to it. So she got what she wanted through manipulation and control. And so you see this seducing spirit and what it loves to do. It loves to manipulate through flattery or through sexual seduction. It loves to gain influence by brown nosing and flattering. And that's how it gains rank and it moves up the ladder. That's These, the truth. It's I've, so I've experienced true. it all. Oh, yeah. It's the truth. Yeah, they love to operate. I would have said half of what you said already, but I'm glad you, you keep oh, on Oh, I'm going. sorry. No, no, it's good. Real no, I'm almost weird. done. No, so take all the time. Done. We have a lot of time. But I've gone through this. I'm going through this right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. This person is at, it's to the T, everything. Yeah, I've been and there, done it, too. And these people are operating under the Jezebel spirit, like 200 they like to play the victim role. They will push the blame back on you and call you it's the, the truth. Jezebel. It's the, the truth. The second you come against it, the second you actually um, call it forth and call it out, they will call you the Jezebel. They're never grateful. They never apologize. And they're entitled. And so they collect. And one of the things that they really do is they collect a lot of information about everyone in order to use it and control and talk about you later. And so many will hear this and immediately think that maybe we're talking about you, maybe the Holy Spirit's convicting you, and that's great. So if you're dealing with the Jezebel, then just pray, ask the, you know, the Holy Spirit. If you're the one that's actually, you've seen that in yourself, just repent, repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to deal with that spirit in you. But if you're the one that's dealing with someone who is a Jezebel spirit in your life, 
you have got to call it out because it will destroy relationships. It can destroy churches. It will destroy businesses, friendships. I mean, it's just a very divisive and destroying spirit. And so the, I mean, if you read Revelations 2.20, it tells you, this is what I have against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. So the first thing you can't, you can't tolerate it. You cannot tolerate it. You have to confront the person. And if they do not repent, you separate yourself from that person. Do not tolerate it. Jesus confronted the church and said, why did you tolerate Jezebel? So you have to confront it because here's the thing. Typically a Jezebel, a true Jezebel will deny everything. They'll never repent and they'll never apologize. And so that's why when you disconnect, if they aren't repeal, and, not, and I'm, not, I'm not saying you disconnect with everyone. If this person is not willing to repent, if they are not uh -huh. going to say, uh, they're not going to apologize, they're not going to say they've done anything, that's when you disconnect. If that person is willing to repent and they're like, you know what, I'm sorry, I see it, I, d I shouldn't have done that, that's different. You always, if someone's willing to repent, you, you forgive. God calls us to forgive. Okay, that's different. But once they haven't, they've denied it all, they haven't been willing to repent, disconnect yourself then you need to repent for allowing that person, for tolerating them, for uh, cooperating with that spirit, and for allowing it to take root in either your business, your family, whatever their situation was. And then lastly, James 4, 7, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So if that spirit tries to come back, because it'll find another host, especially if you are um, walking in a in, uh, 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 some kind of supernatural if you have a ministry or you have a calling in your life it's going to mm -hmm. come chase after you through another host mm -hmm. so all you have to do is just resist the devil and he will flee you'll see it now you'll see the fruit of what happens you'll see the consistency in it and then just flee from it like no mm -mm, i see that person i'm going to disconnect and don't allow it don't allow it don't tolerate it don't let it take root in your life anymore yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. She, people, amen. And she would murder people just she for would. fun. Just yeah. for fun. Look what she did to Naboth. She was so yeah. wicked. She was so wicked. So wicked. And one thing, when people start, so you know, it's wicked. very painful when oh. people start calling you a Jezebel. And maybe you do have some control issues. Maybe there are some things there that people need to repent. My problem mm -hmm. with the spirit of Jezebel in, in the, the mm -hmm. church is somebody take it to the extreme and they call everybody a Jezebel. And Jezebel hated God. She was a God hater, and there yeah. are people that love God with all of their hearts, and they have been called a Jezebel, and it's very, very hurtful. Now, it's, it didn't offend me, but it appalled me because there was many times because of my boldness and because of how God has called mm -hmm. me that I've been called the spirit of Jezebel more than, <laughs> more than times I can count. Trust me, it's true. And, and you know... I, it's just so ridiculous because you're a bold person or God has put an anointing on your life and that you're out there. And the things that oh, I have all this stuff written down right here, but it doesn't matter. We're just, you know, one thing with Jezebel, too, is when when somebody is trying to control with the spirit of Jezebel, a lot of times it isn't just all of the manipulation in a way of all of the things that Priscilla pointed out. They'll, they'll all of a sudden... I, I just exactly. can't believe you didn't. You didn't believe me. And, 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 you know, and, and they make it look so yeah. like you've really mm -hmm. hurt them. You've really wounded them. And of course, they, they, the, anybody's heart, or you can call us the church or a four-walled gathering or whoever at that time, that leadership, then after everything else, then they're kind of like, oh, out of this sloppy agape love, then they're like, Oh, you know, we've really wounded. We need to, you know, mm -hmm. we need to back off. And that's, that's one of her deceptions. One of that, right. I shouldn't say her, it can operate in he or whatever. But that's one of the deceptions of the spirit of Jezebel, because then you want to back up. Oh, we don't want to wound this person. We don't, mm -hmm. No. So then this spirit has reign again to do everything. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, um, you know, Priscilla, you pointed out also was uh, the, the change what will happen in leadership, and listen, I've dealt with this more, mm -hmm. more than what I want to admit, 
But I can guarantee you, I've always searched my heart. If maybe I was maybe con trying to control yes. or manipulate in the situation or any of those things, because you don't want to be that kind of right. a person. Right. Because you cannot go to the next level if you're doing it out of manipulation, right. out of control or anything. God is not going to allow you to sit and reach billions of people if you're doing it out of manipulation and control. Sooner or later, you're going to fall. You're going to come down and he's going to expose you because he can't... It's toleration. He can't tolerate it. He don't want us to tolerate mm -hmm. it. And why would he let us keep going? Right. And, and, and it may hurt us for a while, but he has to correct mm -hmm. that. Yep. Or otherwise, we're all going to be a bunch of Jezebels running around. Right. And so what happens is your voice... And, and Priscilla pointed this out in a different way, starts being disrespected. When you were very respected in the realm of your peers and the people, a, a, a prophetic voice, and God always had me as a prophetic voice because I'm, you know, I, I don't announce this ever. If, if people know it, they don't. They, if they do, then they've seen the anointing of God on my life because I walk in the office of apostle prophet. And so God would always use me in my city and to speak to things like mm -hmm. that, to because I was always kind of involved, mm -hmm. right? Leadership would just always put me there. And when you know that that voice was respected, and then all of a sudden it's just turned on and disrespected, and they get very suspicious of you, you know something is hidden. There's a hidden agenda mm -hmm. behind there, like sin or uh, just manipulation from that spirit operating and projecting on you to get you out of there, to get your voice shut up. And listen, it's tried to shut my voice up for many times to where God finally spoke to me and said, I am mm -hmm. lifting your call and your voice as a prophet off of this city and the men and women of God, but not off the world, not globally. And he had to do that because a prophet is without honor in their hometown and that's what started okay. happening and and you know what he allowed all of that so that he could take me out and put me on a diving board into the ministry that i really needed to where it was the voice was respected again and honored and and those who did not want that uh, sad to say you know some fail some are okay but it, it, it's just how it is and the thing with the Jezebel spirit, it will come in and it will attack your voice, make your voice look like it's the bad one. When it was, like I said, respected, mm -hmm. and it comes after, you said identity, which is identity in Christ, but, yes. but I say reputation. Yes, same it thing. It will come mm -hmm. after I your agree. reputation to yes. make you look like your voice is it's just, so true. oh, Go Lord, it. what, look what it's he coming did. against yes. the church, it, it's coming against us it's coming against what we believe it's right. coming against the city um they're not for us they're not for the city because it always wants to project and turn that back on you and i know what i'm saying here because again i've went through it and you know going through things god always when you're going through, if you look up that word, it only means in one side and out the other. Right. And thank God that he is so good and he always shows you. And many times I would fight and say, am I this terrible? Am I this bad? Is, I mean, did I really do this? Did I? Am I this kind of a person? Am I that ugly inside? Am I that? You know, because you... You find yourself staying up nights with God when something like that happens and comes in and he'll, oh, he is so good and he'll take you step by step through everything and let you know that you're okay. And I had, I had to do that many times through these attacks, but I'll tell you what, Jezebel did not win. She did not win. Now, I didn't tolerate mm -hmm. her in my life. Amen. And, and, and a lot of times, like I say, the people that tolerate it we have to learn through every pain, through every hurt, through every disrespect, through every dishonor, through no matter what they do. One thing that God taught me, it wasn't no longer words out of my mouth, just kind of like cliche saying it, but the, the scripture, bless those who persecute you. They bless the prop. I mean, they curse the prophets before you. And in the same way, and they did Jesus the same way, they hated him. Mm -hmm. One of the most major prophets on this earth, but the son of God first. He was the son of God who died for us. And so he took it all. We take it all. But I can tell you what, you come out and you rise out of that fire knowing mm -hmm. 
the trickery and the manipulation and, and the, the uh, false thing that the spirit turns around on you. And it's so heartbreaking because when you go through it and you see people falling prey to it, that's a journey that they have to go through mm -hmm. and learn what they did. I've had some come back and repent, some no, and I don't care. I don't care if any of them ever do, but I do mm -hmm. hope and pray that they learn not to try to devastate somebody because I happen to be strong enough in the Lord, even young, strong enough because he protected me. Amen. Because of him in me, nothing Thank I can God. do. That's right. It's not me patting me on the back. It was all because of him, you know, or otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. It would have destroyed me. And this is why we're saying today, we don't want it to destroy you. Amen. If it's happening no. to you, we want you to know if you've done everything you can in your heart and repented and said, God, you know what's going on and, and I don't want to be like this, then let me tell you, this is not you. Jezebel's spirit if you were operating out of a true spirit, you could care less what you were doing. If exactly. you were hurting anybody, you yeah. would care less to repent to God right. or so to true. anybody else. And so if you were crying that out, you know. That you and don't have I'll it. tell you the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Know this. If you were in a situation to where your voice was honored and then all of a sudden you're a threat. Yes. It's happening. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Mm -hmm. And you just need to ask God, do I need to back out of this and not, you know, tolerate this? Because they're thinking the same thing. Jezebel's trying to tell them, who, he, she, they're the, uh, they're the problem. Mm -hmm. They're a threat. They're going to, you know, they're going to, you know, they're, they're bad mouthing and they're, you know, mm -hmm. no, we're exposing. Amen. Yes. Because an apostle or a prophet or anybody that God spoke to even in a gift to go. Now, he wouldn't do the gift of prophecy to go to a pastor or a leader and start pointing anything out because that's an office gift. You know, prophecy, again, it's edification, exhortation, or comforting. He's not going to send somebody with a gift of prophecy, a layman in the church, to go and tell a pastor like yeah. Nathan did, you are the man, to David. Right. It's just not going to happen. And if you are doing that, God's only calling you to pray. If you are seeing something like that, and He, you, I guarantee you, he will send somebody to try to do it and and if they're not doing anything about it then sooner or later there's going to be devastation something's going to right. happen yeah mm -hmm. I agree yeah. Amen. I Amen. Amen. Yes. And the, God, I can go both, on forever I know I'm, both ahead, sharing. Yeah. I'm going to read a little bit mm -hmm. of what I um, wrote about it as uh, Jezebel is a spirit it's going to overlap but it's okay. Yeah. Because uh -huh. when okay. we talk about things, yes, it. yes, yes a spirit, exactly. It's a spirit Somebody that controls in right now, and manipulates. It intimidates. It yep. dominates every relationship. So you'll see a pattern in someone's life. Um, it's a natural tendency to behave in a particular way towards aggression. So it'll be very, very strong and very aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, a Jezebel spirit or an attitude, it, um, it can actually be learned. So mm -hmm. it's a spirit that can be passed down generational. Right. Um, it can be somebody who's always gotten their way, a very spoiled child that really wasn't disciplined. Yeah. Um, or it can come from a deep wound of insecurity where they turn into a need to control. So, and then an alter ego that just arises up. They play the um, to over role. Yes, they manifest yes, very them. much. Mm -hmm. And when this happens, they'll do whatever it takes to get their agenda in their own way. Mm -hmm. A Jezebel spirit actually knows no gender, even though we talk about Jezebel in the Bible. It doesn't know, exactly. um, it can affect a male or female, and mm -hmm. I've seen it in both. Mm -hmm. Jezebel will always find an Ahab. Yes. Someone who will bend to their will um, that will be passive and be a doormat. So um, in that, you have <coughs> talked about uh, in First Kings about Naboth. And I'm going to read this because this is exactly what the Ahab will do. Yes. And Jezebel will play on it and take it to the limit like we talked about murder. So in First Kings 21, it says, Ahab desired Naboth's vineyard. Naboth said no. And he said to the Lord, forbid him to not give away his father's inheritance. Ahab began to pout. He began to not sleep. He turned his face away. So he's actually pouting. He's like, I'm not going to listen. Um, I can't, I'm not getting my way. And I'm going to use my emotions mm -hmm. to manipulate this right now. Mm -hmm. He became silent and resentment and, and a protest on the outside that was acting on the outside because of pouting. Mm -hmm. He became depressed. And so then this opened the door for Jezebel. 
to play on this, his wife, to control with that aggressive behavior. She scolded Ahab, so she put him down and took the power and authority completely upon herself. And then she told him, get up and eat and be cheerful. So she, she made him feel bad, but then she's like, oh, I'm going to pretend that it's okay. Everything yeah, is so good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll take care of you in this situation. Don't you worry, even though I just beat you up. <laughs> and then Jezebel lied and wrote letters. To, in Ahab's name, she hired uh, scoundrels and people to lie, told lies about Naboth, and then um, she even said he blasphemed God mm -hmm. and the king, and they took Naboth outside the city, stoned him to death, and then she proudly, because she took care of it, she had control, told Naboth, or Ahab, that Naboth had died and the vineyard was his, and so she was able to manipulate all the way through, mm -hmm. do murder, use her emotions, play on his emotions, beat him up, and then turn it around that she was the hero, that she took care of it, yep. and took out people along the way, lied, manipulated. And it's so sad because when, when Jezebel rises up like that, she will use all the emotions that are within her and everyone else's emotions to get what she wants. She will laugh yep. in the face of somebody's wounds mm -hmm. while she's causing it. But then turn around and go, so good. it's wow, really, she's it. really yeah. not my fault. And then if she has to apologize or that spirit, he has to apologize, they'll be like, I'm so sorry you felt that way. Right. So they will never take, take ownership. Mm -hmm. That's I'm sorry, yes. I'm take sorry I hurt you. But when you acted not like that. that, it caused me to act this way. Uh -huh. So so there's yeah. never taking ownership of what they've done. And it causes even more um, passivity mm -hmm. on somebody else's side, that Ahab. And then she gets, again, she gets to be the hero in the situation. Yes. Or that so, spirit does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful when we're on either side of that, that not not to fall into that. Oh, my God. And I want, yeah. there is so much. So do you think we have enough for another show? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So please, <laughs> yeah. we are going to do show number two. And uh, please stay tuned for the Jezebel spirit. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest soils, and now I'll, I'll repeat this on our next show, where uh, Jezebel has uh, been given a voice mm -hmm. is in a religious spirit. Mm -hmm. And if there's operation of religion around, yes. I've seen it. It stinketh, and where religion is, Jezebel just has this free voice. And so, anyways, if you don't know Jesus, listen. Yes. Number one, you have to have him to fight this. <laughs> yes. He's the uh, one that all authority, all the power, mm -hmm. and the blood of Jesus uh, is sufficient for anything. Every yeah. demon flees at the drop of a blood, you Amen. know? Mm -hmm. And so, we just, we just want you to know the one who is so powerful and amazing and has given us all life up here and eternal life. You'll go to heaven eternally if you'll just ask Jesus into your life today. Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. Mm -hmm. Not shall, you know, not just maybe kind of sorta. You will be. Amen. And so, you know, sometimes I always say that 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 you're so broken, sometimes you can't even say the prayer because you've been so touched right now. And God knows. He knows how you're crying out in your heart because he knows what we ask before we ask it. And if you've asked him into your life and to forgive you of your sins, ask him to baptize you with yes. the Holy Spirit with fire. I'll tell you, it'll never be the same. And call mm -hmm. our prayer lines or somebody and let them know that yes. you came to the Lord today, okay? That's what we're all about here. We're so excited and we'll see you in the kingdom. Please go to our website, God's View TV Shows, Dot com. Donate today so we can keep coming in your home and around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it gives us uh, funds to do more and go on more. Oh, it's goodbye for the day. God does have a view. God does have a view personally for you. Mwah. We love you. Going around the globe for the gospel.